So this is interesting. This is uh, part of a network analyzer I dug out of the trash. Uh, obviously we have uh, the display section and it's a 8510B network analyzer. Uh, unfortunately I don't have any of the interconnect cables. It uses HPIB to talk between the various like 2U sections and I don't have any of those cables. So I can power this up. You can obviously see it generates an error. You can derp around in the menus. Um, it's got a tape drive which is hilarious. This powers up but all, the only thing I can do with it is notice that these two lights turn on. Um, so, uh, one thing I can do is that this is extremely heavy, so I'm pretty confident there's a lot of crap in there. Um, you know, I, it should be lots of fun RF black magic. So we can poke around with the display, which is fun if nothing else. So, obviously, power up self tests. Uh, Apparently it's testing its EEPROM. Maybe. So interestingly enough, this doesn't actually appear to have a... Uh, it does not appear to have a, a label name that I can see clearly. Also interestingly enough, the, uh, the display section, the power switch for this is on the back. Um, I don't know what I just did. I just somehow reset it. Um, so obviously you can see it's saying it can't talk to the IF detector, mostly because there's no cables, this is not connected to anything. Um, but, uh, I mean, there's lots of various interesting little bits. Um, processor RAM test. So one thing of note is that there's this bit, this interesting, I think it's an LED display behind this cl clear panel which kind of changes states. Like if I go um, marker, let's see, run main program is 15, enter, and you can see it's obviously changed. And I think normally this shows GPIB. Yeah, it's got 1248. I think normally this shows uh, GPIB addresses or HPIB address for when it's talking to an external system. So it takes backup tapes. I have a few of the tapes around. Um, well, they're not backup tapes. This is how it, the data storage, which is kind of hilarious. So once I try to get it into the main program, it doesn't do anything. So I have to turn it off and turn it back on again. So I think, as again, this will be a, a two-part teardown. There's going to be the display unit, which I think has the computer in it, and then there'll be the, uh, the network analyzer. Uh, I may, I will, do want to look this up on the internet just to see how much it goes for because some of these older H Hewlett Packard network analyzers are really nice. Um, so, um, let's see, what happens if I go to 21? Whoops. 20. These buttons suck. No tape and drive. <laughs> let's go to uh, 22. Display processor test. I have to spectrum test. Uh, let's go to 1. So first of all, we can see 1987. Display sections board, let's go to th test pattern. Oh, that's cool. Um, oh, hey, look, you can plot the screen. So this is apparently like what the display looks like. That's quite a cool little, um, it's a pretty cool little vector display, and obviously you can see it's doing text, and it has a whole bunch of symbols to, re to, plot, to return a menu push marker, um, dot with line pattern. Oh, that's cool. So that's testing. I guess this must be vector. I mean, it looks like a vector display, and I guess what they're doing is they're testing to go to dots and so forth. Marker. Uh, let's see. Six. So the focusing is obviously these things here. Uh, seven diagonal line. That's interesting. I guess you can see beat frequencies by the modulated. Also, look at the cool scanline patterns that produces. So uh, two.
That's cool. So it's just got a lot of neat looking test patterns. Um, let's see, I want, where is F? D, C, D, A, D, F, there it is. Around with my blah blah blah. Um, so I want to go to F again. Uh, let's see. That was where I was. That's interesting. I don't have the password. I can go into the keyboard test, which then just locks the system up and tells me the scan code to be to the buttons. But anyway, so yeah, so now let's kind of switch views and we'll start taking a pop inside. So we are, as you can probably see, kind of exceeding the ability of stuff to fit on my workbench. So you can also see it's got this big fan on the back, which um, I, I guess they didn't have space in the case for it, so they just hung it out the back. I've seen a few like uh, Hewlett Packard devices do that sort of thing. It's weird. Oh, this is an 85101B, incidentally, display processor. Ooh. So now we have interestingness. So this is the... Oh, that's cute. It's a little cover. So it looks like, look down there, there's a whole bunch of uh, big metal can transistors and cards. Processor, I bet. MC6802, yeah. <laughs> it's all dusty. Man, look at this little row of lint that's gathered on these dip switches just because the airflow is this direction. That's hilarious. Um, Normally these things are extraordinarily well designed. Okay, yeah, actually, it looks like this one is too. So I suspect if I loosen those kit connectors, this whole board or apparatus will pull out. Because if you see down there, this is actually an alignment pin. Actually, that's interesting. Interrupt. L, F, R, E, or L, free run, halt, reset. Um, it's got lots of little interesting. There's a, a prom or an EEPROM, a UV EEPROM. Uh, you can also see here's the tape drive. your your CPU module and then we have some big ribbon cables so these um, 8510 so there's a special connector over here for the 8510 analyzer and then that is a uh, IF display interconnect which is a DB25 and then the general purpose HPIB interface is over here there's the fan. So you can see these two big metal pins which serve to align this connector. And we have that which appears to be a... Okay, this is actually the tape drive board. So this is the tape drive module and this is apparently the controller for the tape drive. And then interestingly enough, that's an edge connector. That's kind of bizarro. Um, so I wonder if they bought the tape drive off the shelf. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, also, that's quite interesting. Look down here. So this is, I believe, a PCB, like a test array. So this is to make sure the PC, you know, to, just a, a verification thing for the, the board house. 
So they, I guess they measure resistance between these two points and, you know, these various points. And if they see a connection, they know that the board was, you know, m produced improperly. Just because, uh, you know, these, you'd expect them to be isolated, assuming the board is fully etched. And, you know, I guess there's no over etch protection there, it's just under etch. So one thing I like is these are all these really nice latching connectors. Actually, this is really cool. Look at these. They have a... Should just fill over. They've got these little ears here, and you pinch those, and it ejects it. So they're like designed to be easy eject. That's a really cool connector. I like those a lot. I wonder where I can buy them. Anyways, let me put this aside. Oh, Jesus, shit, heavy. So, CPU box. So. Uh, this is obviously just a back plane. You can see there's one end. Interestingly enough, the other end also has a, the opposite gender connector, so I wonder if these can be stacked. Uh, so, processor display gen A15IO, A13MBM. Test con is just this three pin connector here. Looks like this is. Um, this may be some sort of power as well there. That's interesting. Look at these little tabs up there. I wonder what those indicate. It's all gold plated, which is beautiful. Let's see, how does this. It looks. But there's only four cards in here. I think that goes like that. Yeah, look at that. Man, that's like a beautifully engineered card cage. Use the ejector ears. I mean, they're not too stuck. Oh, yeah. ah. Ah. Now this looks like memory. So these are all Hewlett Packard custom. Well, they've got the Hewlett Packard number, but these are X28256D-35. Yeah, so my money's on this being all memory. Um, or at least all of this being like SRAM of some sort. Um, we've got some UVE proms. Here's a Signetics 74LS154. Yes. And then we have some S unusual, some oh, excuse me, usual assortment of national parts. SP8806, 74LS245. Yeah, just generic stuff. That looks like a wet slug tent. Well, those are unusual. Um, yeah, this is just all 7400 series logic, except for that, it's another 806. So these are pretty cool. So we have, um, obviously these are UVE EEPROMs. And then they've glued the sticker down, that's annoying. Yeah, who cares, it's just a EEPROM. So we've got more, that's a 74F34, 38, excuse me. And there's a, a UA749, I think. Just, I think that is. So, random tantalum. so this must be the memory card, and it looks like they have like a memory expansion option here. You've got your bypass caps, and you've got this big horizontal bus running all the way along. And then this looks to be where this bus interconnects to the back plane. Tire traces. Interestingly enough, this looks to only be a two-layer board, which is fairly impressive. Anyways. I'm putting this in the wrong way. No, I'm not. Let's go up. So that was two layers, but all these other three boards look to be four layers. And one thing I will say is these have been in here long enough to be really, really impressively well stuck. It's free. Ooh. That's fun. We already have like a bizarro special purpose IC. C5061. So that, um, what was this? Oh, wow. <laughs> this was labeled the, uh, this is the A15IO board. Incidentally, if you look down in there, 
There's no solder mask on this side of the board. It's just straight up gold plated. Um, so you can see. All right. I don't have manual focus override. See, that's just straight gold plated traces. So here is a rather interesting board. We've got your our esoteric uh, hybrid type thing here. We saw it poked through the board. It looks like it's. That's quite interesting. These are just gold plated holes. It looks like it's just held onto the board at just pressure. Actually, let's get my nut drivers. Oh yeah, look at that. So, we just have, um, what on earth is that? It looks like it's little rings of, hang on, I have to change lenses. So that looks to be like a, like one of the, the, the zebra strips. It's like an old zebra strip. It looks like this thing's, it's like plastic, squishy plastic cylinders coated in gold, like sputtered gold. And then they somehow etch it, because I mean that's definitely squishy. You can kind of see it deforming. I've never seen that before. And then you can see it mates with just these um, gold flat sections on this big hybrid thing, which is on a, it's got a ceramic backing. That's a really interesting looking IC. I haven't seen that IC construction before. Uh, I just realized I don't know which way this IC goes anymore. Um, Oops. <laughs> uh, oh wait, no, it's got, okay, yeah, the holes are, that hole is inset from the other one, so I know which way it goes on. But man, I have never seen that style of construction. And I guess it's just held in there with, like, tape or some sort, or, I think it's just held in there by friction. But that's quite interesting. Um, go figure. And I don't even know why this needs this special ASIC part, because it's a this isn't like the processor, this is just the I.O. board apparently. According to the uh, the labeling. Let's see, I need to rotate it 90 degrees. Yeah, I guess it's the pins are all lining it up. Got a little bit of wibbly wobbly, but I think the interpin spacing is sufficient to deal with that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyways, continuing on, we have. Lots of various logic. Um, I don't know what those are. They look like they may just be power transistors. Well, they're marked. That one's marked U. Um, I don't see the U markings on these, but I, I suspect um, they're voltage regulators or something. This is probably voltage regulation. We have a bunch of little metal can. Uh, those are all transistors or JFETs or something along those lines there. Um, these look to be hermetically sealed wet slug tantalums. These are really expensive parts. Because um, they've got uh, the glass seal in one end. Those things cost just a frickin' arm and a leg, like 30 bucks for one. Anyways, we have a um, D8729-5S4117. Uh, made by Intel. With a, it's, got a, it's an L830... Excuse me, 830536. It's probably like an, an IO type thing. Um, P8454 space uh, 5S2016. More Intel parts. Here's some AMD stuff. 8746DP, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 1982. So that's 8746DP, 1982. Wow, this is pretty old. 
7400 series, 7400 series, 7400 series. Um, this is interesting. These are SIRDIPS 8736DM. 8625DM. Here are more Intel parts. These are 81, excuse me, 8291A. So D8291A, S52009, uh, L8100347. Intel parts. Here's some national semi parts. Um, S open parenthesis P8748. I have no idea what that is. I've never even seen a parenthesis in a part number before. Uh, weird. Um, here's a Signetics part. Um, FEC5567. Mm -hmm. Looks to be about everything I'm interested in this one. Uh, in the uh, Tantalum Lots of 74 series. Uh, these are national SP8806. I bet a lot of this is custom stuff for HP. TIU, or excuse me, national should do a lot of that. Got some big chunky resistors up here. Carbon comp resistors, nevertheless, too. Go figure. Um, weird. So this is the display generator. So this may handle, well, this probably does handle producing the, uh, the maybe the analog waveforms for the display. I'm not sure. Um, I know that there. I've seen some papers of you know some old documentation for how to do that in uh, TTL, which is crazy. But yeah, so we have um, M5K4164ANP. M5K4164. Yeah, so these are all gang together, and these are all gang together, which makes me think this is like a RAM array of some sort. Um, these are interesting. These are TI74S482. Uh, Excuse me, here they are. In SIRDIP, which is interesting. Here's more of these SP8806 slash something. More esoteric national semi parts. What on earth is that? It's, look how tall that shit is. Um, PE 9829 006. It says in on one side and out on the other. It could be like magnetics or something. Um, resistor arrays. Um, here's 8806's, here's an S8801. Uh, yeah, so that 8806 is most definitely a TA part number, or excuse me, a national, uh, uh, excuse me, it's a Hewlett Packard part number because this is a TI part that is also S8801, 8800, whereas this is SP8806. So I would assume that that's like an internal part number. Um, here's more of these 74. Uh, 74S482 in SIRDIP. There's a bunch of them. Um, here's These are all SP8806. I bet these are like some sort of buffer drivers for this big parallel interface. And then these, I'm 95% certain, are PALs. Um, they're AMD branded. I like they found the most obnoxious sticker possible. So that is a um, unbranded. It's well, it's it's AMD branded, but it's got it's got eight seven four four DM and then the Hewlett Packard part number on it. But from the fact that they have stickers on them, it generally means they're programmed in some manner, which means it's almost definitely a PAL. We've got a few odd mint capacitors here, but other than that, this is all digital. This board should be interesting. This is the processor board. So, first thing of interest is down here we have a Motorola MC68020, 68020. So that's a, a 6800 series microprocessor. So this is probably the main CPU. Um, interestingly enough, I'm just realizing 
there's the clock crystal, it's a 16 megahertz crystal, but it's at the complete opposite end of the board. Go figure. Um, so, lots of various stuff here. These are um, M5M44256AP. So I would bet that this is like local memory for the processor. Because um, it's approximate and it's on the same thing and it's got 256 in the title. That's marked U41, but it's a SIP package. It looks like it's, it feels like it's been epoxy filled in from the top. Um, I don't have any idea what that is. This is fairly interesting. Here's a bunch of LEDs marked self-test. These are old style LEDs too. Um, here's an, uh, a UV EEPROM. TC571000D-20. And then we have these two devices here, which I can see are labeled PAL, so I'm not even going to bother with the sticker. This must be just the same. So we have some programmable array logics here, probably just for glue. This is quite interesting. Look at this. Start, stop, clock, ground, um, interrupt with an L yellow LED. This is clock, and this is LD something something CK. Here's LD SACK 0 and LD SACK 1. Apparently it has to load the sack. Um, so it's interesting that some of these programmable devices, like these programmable devices, are soldered straight into the board, whereas these devices are socketed. Here's more interesting part numbers. Equal sign B8806. The only thing I can think of is they must have been like, you know what, we have a, here's an ASCII table, let's just go across the ASCII table and use those on all of our part numbers. Your raster engraver can handle ASCII, right? And they're like, okay. <laughs> or your screen printing mechanism. So this 8806, because I mean, look over here, we have another um, 8806, SP8806, so it looks like the prefix. This is equal sign B8806, whereas this is SP8806. Weirdness. Um, more specialty, these are AMD branded. 7400 series, 7400 series, 7400 series, 7400 series. 7400 series, big 7400 series. And that's about it, so I guess that's everything they needed and some resistor arrays, and lots of interesting test points. Diodes. There was another row of test points. Here they are. So this, what we have here is um, SA3, TP5, ST, ground, um, all sorts of weirdness. This is interesting. We have a little loop test point here, and yet over here we have another loop test point that only uses a single pad. Uh, go figure. Um, maybe these are like jumpers you can hook around. I don't know how. I, I have some clip-on current probes from the same time, you know, time, and they're not, there's no way in hell they could fit through that little tiny loop. In fact, I don't even know if anything modern, well, I'm sure something modern can. But this board is, um, it's definitely multiple layers, but I can't make out how many. That's fairly interesting. There's our, our clock PROC, and there's LG, LCLOK, excuse me, there's clock probe. And here's LC, okay. So that's the L clock. Um, and then that's uh, unmarked. Interesting test points. And as usual, the backside's empty, though. Here's how many pins that micro has. Oh, yeah. Sit down in there. So. So here we are. Obviously, um, here's the high voltage supply. You can see the output right there. Um, various oddments here. 18 kilovolts. Um, do not remove this cover when power is on. So there's some sort of focusing thing. Oh boy, they've got free washers. That's terrible. Man, they sure do love their edge cards, don't they? Everything in here has a frickin' edge card connector on it. I mean, look. <laughs> so this has just a, um, a little connector there. 
Wow, this has got some interesting transformers on it, and wow, I think these are mobs. It's all gold plated. That on the workbench. Hey. Here's more. Look at these. There's more LEDs and a bunch. I see a relay. There's a transformer on a circuit. Oh wow, look at that. That's so here we're just looking a little closer. Look at down in here. This is quite interesting. So do you see that part right there that the flashlight's on? Though it's kind of washing the camera out. That appears to be an SCR. So if I can't change the focus. I mean, that's a, it looks like it's a big SCR mounted into a giant chunk of metal, which then appears to just be PC mounted. Also interesting, look, there's a transformer sitting on a little gold circuit board, which is then bolted into the system. Also relevant, um, let me get rid of the flashlight. This is a choke, and we have two big diodes with some big resistors on them. Uh, over here we have... High voltage flyback, there's a voltage multiplier, and um, let me disconnect the camera. So, ready. we have a, uh, you know, so there's your high voltage step up transformer, and then down in there you can see there's some, some big capacitors, and those smaller diameter things are actually uh, like long high voltage many mega ohm dischargers, uh, discharge resistors, I believe. So there's also like a relay down there, which is kind of interesting. You can see there's that SCR and a bunch of radial electro electrolytics. There's some big caps down there for the power supply of some somewhere. I actually don't know entirely where the power supply for this thing is. I don't see it anywhere. There is the uh, the tape drive readouts. So I suspect. Yeah, that's interesting. So look down there. We have Y, Ample, and then that would be X. So I suspect that this uses electrostatic deflection, and that these are our two, um, these are our, our X and Y amplifiers. And when I look at that, they have these little flip of tabs. So I suspect this is an oscilloscope style tube, rather than like a, a, a modern, or well, a modern-ish, I guess it's, they're kind of out of date now, a n more traditional, uh, Sorry, I just plugged my external monitor back in. There it is. Rather than a more traditional, like a, a electro, you know, coil deflectant tube. So these are interesting little boards. I suspect these are the X and Y deflection amplifiers. So what do these? Uh, so these appear to have connectors. I'm gonna just pull one out for the moment, just so that I can look at it. This is quite cool. Look at this nice. Um, this nice, uh, you know, grabby loop that you just kind of rotates around. So also down in here we have uh, whatever this stuff is. Line generator. I still don't know where the power supply is. <laughs> and then this. Oops. It's another one of these things with this wonderful flip out pull tab. This is a um, it isn't labeled, but it's got ortho, pattern, astig, HF gain, focus gain, int limit, int gain. So this looks to be roulette, you know, involved in focusing for the uh, the CRT. Where is the power supply? I don't even see a power transformer. That is... Huh. Well, that's bizarre. Could I just be blind somehow? So power comes in here. It might be down in there. I just doesn't seem to, I think the power supply may be down in here and it just needs a really small power. And it's got all this logic, it needs a fair amount of power. Uh, the only thing I can think of is that this power supply mounted down in here 
this one down there, that may be the power transformer for the whole system. It seems a little unlikely, but I don't see any other power transformers. Anyways, moving on. So here are all these interesting boards I yanked out. Excuse me. So. This board interests me a fair amount. This may be power supply related now that I think about it. Uh, first of all, beautiful gold plating. Okay, yeah, this is power supply related because right up here we have 5 volts, negative 12 volts, plus 12 volts. Uh, what on earth are those? They are, uh, they have to be inductors of some sort because they've only got two pins. Um, and look at these big green things, ED50, ED50HLZ1, I think. 50803F. Yeah, so there's um plus 100 adjust, plus 15, minus 15. This thing has a lot of rails. Um, so here's a, a really adorable little pot core transformer. And then we have all of these things, which actually look to be uh oh wow, no kidding, these are fuses. So if you look down in there, there's an extremely fine line between the two. These are bus fuses. Um, you can see down there, bus 6MW. That one is 125 volts at 1 amp. That one is 125 volts at 1 tenth of an amp. It's 1 tenth of an amp. That's quite interesting. I wonder... Yeah. So they're even done properly. So you can see these are just little pull-out fuses in the power supply. Um, they're ceramic. I bet these seem to be hermetic, I bet. Or maybe, I don't know. Yeah, so this is 6MW, that's a 2 amp fuse, and then there's a little tiny lead in there. That's very hard to see. Lots of electrolytics, some big, some big film caps. Um, EC30HL31. I don't know much about that. Here's another one of these little fuses. You can see all these char these charmingly old school LEDs. Um, they just gold plated the whole thing and they didn't use a silk, which is kind of interesting. Well, there's oh wait, there's a silk screen on, or excuse me, solder mask on the back. That's kind of amazing. So yeah, this is definitely power supply related. Um, though that's interesting. This is a capacitor with one terminal on one end. They're all that way. One terminal on this end, two terminals on that end. So that is. Um, 390 mic, 0 to 40 volt DC. I don't know if this is two separate 340 mic. There's another fuse. Ca caps are just one. Um, interestingly enough, the only two, there's only two active components on here. There's this, which is a, um, that's a 74LS14, which is just a logic gate. And this is a, uh, wow, that's RCA branded H501. But it's got uh, eight legs. Eight legs. It doesn't have any other branding on it. It's got RCA N501 and then the Hewlett Packard part number. Let's see here, our, our big TO devices. That is a an 8438. That is another 843. And I bet these are power transistors. That is a uh, it's a national part. It is a colon H508. Oh Christ. Them and their bizarro part numbers. I have no idea what that is. But yeah, it looks like there's a little, some sort of DC to DC on here, I guess, just from that little pot core thing. Runs down to this fuse. Anyways. So this, I'm pretty confident, is like the X or Y deflection amplifier for the uh, grid. So you can see here we have position, um, there's gain, and HF gain. And then we have E1 and E2. No real, I don't see any description terms, but you can see that this uses all canned. There's a poly, uh, excuse me, a mica, mi multiple mica caps. These are expensive caps. Um, there's a little um, shielded tuned inductor. And then we have some high power, high precision resistors. 
is another one of those things. This is quite the board. So we have a whole bunch of, all of these devices are, so this is a 2N3251. Let's see what that one, that is a 2N3251. That is a 2N3251. Looks like a lot of these are 2N3251s. Um, this is another Bizarro. This is a National Semi Canned IC colon slash H85452. No, excuse me. Eight, colon slash H, as in Harry, 8452. <laughs> Weird ass part numbers. I'm surprised I don't see any PNP devices here. So I may just not be seeing them. Okay, yeah, I suspect these are PNP devices. You can see the cans finish is slightly different, and I don't see a part number on them that isn't the, the uh, Hewlett Packard part number. But that's quite interesting. I bet this deals with this is probably like a, a fairly high voltage, fairly low current, high speed amplifier, um, which is you know commonly what you need for electrostatic deflection, as is used in oscilloscope tubes, rather than electromagnetic style. Excuse me, electromagnetic style deflection, which is used in most more common CRTs. Uh, the, the primary advantage of electrostatic deflection is it's way faster because you don't have to deal with the inductance of the tube, or excuse me, the inductance of the deflection coil. The downside is you need really high voltages. So this is interesting. I think this, I don't actually know what this is. Um, so these are interesting. So we have here two, um, these are, uh, I believe, LED and normally light dependent resistors in a can. So you can obviously see we have some sort of feedback mechanism over here. It actually looks like these two are in series, and then these two go to different places. These are interesting. People, uh, a lot of like audio wackos like these um, because you can, you know, it's basically a light-dependent resistor, and you can tune the value of that resistor by using the by changing the drive current of the LED. It's not quite linear, but apparently, you know, they like them for expensive volume potentiometers and you know, like other bizarro instrument type things where you have like a, you need a, a voltage or current-tuned resistor, and you don't care about the nonlinearities. This is involved in the high voltage in some manner, I'm fairly confident. This probably drives the uh, the high voltage flyback transformer, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, you can see here we have one uh, MFD, one microfarad at 400 volt DC. Uh, yeah, this is, I don't know where this goes. This takes off from the transformer. And we also, interestingly enough, these uh, look to be more little tiny transformers. These may be gate drive transformers or something for these parts, or base drive. I don't know if you can draw, use base drive for uh, BJTs. Let's get a little inductor. Um, SG9382840509. Um, no, don't know what that is. I think it's Signetics. Uh, we have another big can, or another can I see, which is another colon slash H504. Then we have these big devices, which are, oh, these are diodes because they've only got two leads. Look at that. So this is probably a rectification of some sort. This may be, um, this may take the high voltage, you know, coming off the transformer and rectify it, smooth it with here, and then feed it out to somewhere. This is fairly interesting. That, I think, is actually a spark gap. You can see it's a glass encapsulated thing room with vacuum in it. I'm fairly confident these are, at this point, actually, these are MOVs, metal oxide varistors, so they're over voltage protection. Got some more, that may be, these may actually be inductors now that I think about it. But this is, um, these are all unknown brands. Here's a little signal transformer incorporated with a little bridge rectifier on the output from the look of it. Yeah, it's a bridge rectifier, I think. Um, not too sure what they're using it for. Just a little LED there. It's kind of an interesting board. Beautifully made, as usual. Um, so solder mask only on the back side, which is to be how they like to do it. So here is another board. This is the... Um, I think this handles controlling the focus of the tube. So this is probably also a high voltage amplifier, but it doesn't need... I don't know. So we have... Um, ortho, PAT, ASTIG, HF gain, focus gain, int limit, int gain. So this probably is... Yeah, it's definitely related to focusing. You can see we have these big, uh, these are all just transistors with heat sinks on them. So that you can see that they've gooped up the inside properly, so I guess the heat sinks are really needed. And as usual, some unusual resistors. These may be inductors, as, usual, as I've said. Transistors, 
lots of transistors in hermetically sealed packages, lots of mica caps, nothing cheap here. Also, it looks like somebody didn't want people tuning this. <laughs> um, yeah, it's quite an, you know, it's more interesting stuff. Then this is just the last board, and this is labeled um, line generator. So my guess would be that basically the, um, the control logic puts out like a series of points, and then this handles producing the lines between those points, you know. So it probably, hand, you know, like you feed it two voltages and it generates a, a linear ramp between those two point voltages, though I am completely talking out my ass. Um, obviously, it's pretty involved. Oops. Some big, expensive mica caps, more, not so big, still expensive mica caps. I think these are ultra high precision resistors. Um, look, at they're mounted up on little pedestals and everything. Uh, so there's probably some precision current sources and stuff going on here. 7400 series. Um, what are some of these things? They are all Hewlett Packard branded only. Damn it, Hewlett Packard's a bunch of dicks. Um, you can see down here it says line generator. All right, so I'm just gonna start putting this stuff back in. Seriously, one thing I didn't mention is they've got these little um, like spacer oval things to keep the lead spaced apart. Oh, that's quite nice. It looks like every card is a discrete length. So you, it, it would take a lot more effort to plug cards in in the wrong place than one would otherwise, you know, it would otherwise. Let's see, did, why don't we, um, why don't I just power that up? And we'll see what the LEDs do. Oh, so I'm expressly violating the instructions by leaving the covers off, but why do they have LEDs in there if you can't power it up with the covers off? Anyways, light, more lights. Hey, look, all of our rails are up. Oh, hey. Did that fan spin up? So, all of these LEDs are on which I would assume means power supply rails are good. And the screen is showing the error message, so let me dump out of the error message. That's fairly interesting, so you can see here, our, uh, the two yellow LEDs are on very dimly. Um, let's try um, processor EEPROM. It isn't making any major difference. But anyways, it appears it's working. That's kind of amusing. I don't think I'm going to take apart the front panel display just because it looks like it's just a board with a bunch of buttons on it that just runs into the back plane. But yeah, so that's pretty cool. It's arrived! Oh, wow. So watch that. You see down there, these two things are neons. So you turn it on, and you saw they flickered. See those? It kind of looks like I stepped through some sequence. And then it looks like it dumps the high voltage into those neons when the system's turning off. So I bet that's its discharge mechanism. It uses those neons. You'll also notice they flicker once on power up. So that's quite interesting. You can also see that our, um, the, the, these LEDs appear to be modulated as the system comes up. So actually it turns out, I was complaining about the LEDs not being visible, but it turns out that these holes are not for adjustment. They're actually for the LEDs. So, one thing that's interesting is that this red LED apparently means the supply is turned off. So apparently the system has like a soft off function. You can see the supply shut down and then it comes up. So I guess the system has some sort of soft off function. Anyways, I hope you found that interesting. <laughs>